He felt that people wanted him gone. When it comes to Michael Jackson's family, most people know the disturbing role that his father Joe played in his childhood. But not many people know a lot about Michael's mom, Catherine, or what her role was like in the family. So what exactly is Catherine's story? From her crazy relationship with Joe to her restraining order against another family member, the truth about what her life has really been like is honestly shocking. Before Catherine became known as the mother of the king of pop, her life had more than its fair share of ups and downs. When she was only two years old, she became extremely sick with polio. Catherine overcame the illness, but it had a life-changing impact on her. After Catherine recovered from polio, she was left with a permanent, obvious limp. She became really interested in music because it didn't test her physical ability. She played the clarinet and the piano in high school, but she had another musical interest and it was truly fascinating. Catherine loved singing and she actually wanted to be a country singer for a while. But after she realized how rare it was for black people to make it big in country music, she lost hope. But what happened next was seriously unexpected. When Catherine was 17 years old, she met Joe Jackson, who was married at the time. Before long, Joe annulled his marriage and started dating Catherine. They decided to get married two years later. And not long after that, the couple started doing something unbelievable. Catherine and Joe began singing together. Joe would also play the guitar, and sometimes his brother Luther would join along. But less than a year later, Catherine and Joe's days of happily singing together came crashing down. Once the couple started having children, Joe got a job at a local steel company. Meanwhile, Catherine stayed home with their nine kids. Eventually, she started working part-time at Sears to help bring in extra money. But around that same time, Catherine made a bizarre discovery. Catherine revealed during a 2010 interview with Dateline that she realized that Michael was very gifted musically when he was only a toddler. She explained that the family's washing machine was giving out and the agitator had started making a lot of noise. Catherine said that sometimes the agitator sounds would make a rhythm and she claimed that little Michael would pick out the rhythm and dance to it. Catherine knew that he had a lot of talent, even then. But Joe didn't notice Michael's musical gift until a few years later. Even though it was Joe who really launched his son's music career, Michael believed that his singing ability had actually been passed down from his mom. He said that she had also been the first person to recognize and cheer on her children's talents. When Joe started seriously managing Michael and his brothers as the Jackson 5, Catherine helped behind the scenes. She stitched the suits that the boys wore on stage. She wasn't as interested in publicity as Joe was, but she was still insanely supportive. Catherine went to every Jackson 5 concert that she possibly could. She loved watching her kids perform on stage. But at that time, Catherine had to stay home with her three youngest kids more often than not. What she suspected next was unbelievably shocking. When Jackson 5 had shows or tours, Joe would drive them to their next stop. But while Catherine raised the little kids at home, she started to doubt that her husband was being faithful. After having suspicions for quite a while, Catherine couldn't shake the feeling that Joe was cheating on her. In 1973, she made a surprising decision. Believe it or not, Catherine actually filed for divorce. Interestingly, she then ended up withdrawing the filing papers. She wasn't going to go through with a divorce, but what happened the following year was honestly startling. In August 1974, Joe welcomed a baby girl with the woman he'd been having an affair with, Cheryl Terrell. They named their daughter Giovanni. But what's really crazy is that Joe managed to keep his affair and his new baby a complete secret. It turns out that Cheryl and Giovanni only lived about five minutes from Catherine and Joe's house. Joe would make time to visit his other daughter almost every other day that he was home. Not only that, but he and Cheryl were still secretly together. Eventually, Catherine found out about Joe's second family. But still, Joe continued seeing Cheryl and raising their daughter together. What Catherine decided to do was absolutely unreal. Astonishingly, Catherine accepted that Joe had another daughter. She pretty much forgave him even though he was still having the affair. But over the next few years, Joe allegedly cheated on Catherine many more times with multiple women. In 1982, Catherine filed for divorce again. But just like the first time, she didn't go through with it. The reason why Catherine couldn't make herself move forward with divorcing Joe was truly insane. Catherine had converted to being a Jehovah's Witness about 20 years earlier. Apparently, her religious beliefs were very against divorces. She had also used her beliefs to forgive Joe for the countless times he had cheated on her. Catherine explained more about Joe's unfaithfulness in her book, My Family, 
the Jacksons, which was released in 1990. Thankfully, Catherine had a much better relationship with basically all of her kids. Catherine and Michael were extremely close. He dedicated his album, Thriller, to her, and she showed him support and unconditional love in the best and worst times of his life. Catherine went to so many of Michael's solo concerts. She also went to every single court hearing with him after he was accused of behaving inappropriately around kids. Michael and his mom just loved each other so much, which is why Catherine was completely devastated by what happened next. In June 2009, Nine, Michael unexpectedly passed away. Catherine later admitted that losing Michael was the worst day of her entire life. She was heartbroken, but her life was about to get incredibly busy. Shortly after Catherine lost her son, she was legally named the permanent guardian of Michael's three kids. After meeting the two oldest children's mom, Debbie Rowe, for the first time, Catherine felt so relieved. Catherine and Debbie had been able to reach a settlement about Prince in Paris. Debbie was granted visitation rights and Catherine was still their legal guardian. But in 2017, Catherine made a seriously bizarre decision. Catherine stepped down as co-guardian of Michael's youngest son, Blanket. She claimed that she was just too old to care for a kid at 87. Soon after, T.J. Jackson, Michael's nephew, was granted sole custody of Blanket. Catherine gets about $1 million each year from Michael's estate. He made sure that his will included a clause that would give his mom some type of regular support. But Joe wasn't even listed in Michael's will, which isn't too surprising. Michael accused his father of causing him serious physical harm throughout his entire childhood. And it wasn't just Michael. Some of Joe's other children claim that he treated them terribly. Unfortunately, it seems like Catherine occasionally suffered from Joe's harm as well. But it turns out that she was aware of what he was doing to Michael and the other kids. This is so awful. According to some of Catherine's children's claims, their mom tried to get their dad to leave them alone. She would supposedly yell at him to stop. But there have also been some allegations about how Catherine didn't do enough to protect them from Joe. Although she never actually divorced him, Catherine and Joe were estranged for so long before he passed away in 2018. But she's continued to be there for her other family members over the years, with one exception. In 2017, Catherine was granted a restraining order against her nephew, Trent Jackson. He had been working as her driver and he'd been close to her since Michael's passing in 2009. But what Catherine accused him of doing was honestly outrageous. Catherine claimed that Trent had been controlling her communication with people, even the family. And she also said that he allegedly tricked workers at her bank into granting him access to her finances, which is terrible. Catherine has always preferred keeping her life more private. And it sounds like in the last few years, she may have moved from California back to Indiana to have an even quieter lifestyle. I can't say I blame her since she's 93 years old now and seems to just want peace. But now I'm curious to know what you think. What are your thoughts on Catherine staying married to Joe, despite his multiple affairs, secret baby, and harmful behavior? And what do you think about Catherine being granted guardianship of Michael's kids after he passed away? Let me know in the comments below.